What's up guys, it's Jamin from Jamin TCG coming to you guys with another Jamin deck profile, but not just any Jamin deck profile. This is the deck profile, my totally awesome deck profile that I just got my invite with it to Nats. That's right, 2019 guys, the Frogmaster is still getting his invite with Frogs. Let's see how I did it. You know, Jam 1 is the Frogmaster, guys, and I've done it again. But I don't want to take all the credit because this deck had a lot of influence from a lot of help from a lot of people. Just, like, you know, their tips. Ultimately, it was my strategies and stuff. But the tips that they had were very helpful. And shout-outs to all of those people. Tang, Ali, Stamati, Ray. Those people were the ones that had a big influence on this deck profile. Some of the little last minute decisions that I decided to do and change and just add to it and just think about it strategy wise. But basically the main thing too was just like the logic was this guys. I don't want to disappoint my fans but it's not disappointment. It's just I still want frogs. That's all that matters. Usually I make some type of cool creative spice. Hey I created a Pelio deck and the logic was basically that, well, Jam 1 the Frogmaster is the Frogmaster. So if he tops, if he uses a deck that wins all the time, usually he should win because it's proven that it wins. And yeah, I did. So that was the logic behind it, guys. That's why I'm doing Pelio. But this is my Pelio deck. I've never showed you guys my Pelio deck. And this is Jam 1 TCG's Pelio deck mixed with some of his mastery of frog mastery so for you paleo players out here pay attention let's do it all right guys so we're just gonna get into it so standard 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 three swap boys you know he's so cool he's on my shoulder right there um he's just the star of the show guys so three they gotta be ot's three three two like I told you guys this before, if you follow me, you know that I told you this a long time ago. These are the best ratios that you can ever do with frogs. The only time is okay. You can do maybe three of these sometimes, but it becomes a brick often unless you got the deck that, do, that can handle that. I wouldn't recommend it. I always say stay to two. Um, sometimes you might want to cut a dupe to two, two, but honestly, these are always the best ratios though. Three, three, two, two. Um, so this Spice, man, Lilith, oh my goodness, guys, like, she is so good. I was looking at a couple of the top YCS profiles and things like that to help inspire me to create this, and Lilith was just, I saw it in one guy's deck profile, shout out to that guy, she's so good. You just tribute her off her cost and then basically set any three, uh, out of three, trap cards from your deck. You can... Pick three of the same ones your opponent has to choose, but three of the same ones you can set. I usually go for Trap Tricks or um, Morella. I'm going to call it Mamma Mia just because it's just funny. But <laughs> I usually go for that or Mamma Mia and it works. Um, Next, my spells. Three Demise. The Paleo community goes back and forth with this, guys. I noticed it. Like, literally, people are like, no, nah, Demise is not good. Demise is lump. Guys, you're drawing three cards, man. Come on. This card is amazing. It's probably going to get banned eventually. It's that good. It doesn't matter if you open with a Swap Frog. You can summon a Swap Frog, normal summon it, and then go ahead and just go your demise, and then literally set five and protect the frog, and then next turn, go ahead. And it doesn't matter. Like, drawing three cards is nuts. Here's my secret weapon. Scapegoat. Um, I have a lot of secret weapons, but this is one of them that I went back and forth with, but like I've always played it and it's so good. Like you can stall your opponent so much, it doesn't matter. Put this in your um, back row of five and then stop them and flip it, you win. Every time I flip scapegoat, I won. Like literally. Um, we're playing in scapegoat package and extra deck, so I'll show you guys that in a minute. Next, let's go to Arpelio. So, one Dinomiscus. I know the community is about to fight me on this, but it's so good, Jam. Da, da, da. Like guys. It can be a brick. Like, literally, if you don't open it, then it's just a brick. So, I went with one, and I'm glad that that was a last-minute decision to do that because it works. And you can always get it with Opobinia if you really need to. But, honestly, one is fine. It's powerful, but I have other things in my deck that are way more powerful than that. So, I'm not even worried about it. Um, Oops. Uh, I might as well just show you. So, we got two. Two of uh, the Oleonotis, the MST one, and then three. Why two and not three? Because even though this format really is trap back row heavy and stuff and sky strikers and stuff, it can be a brick is also same logic as Dino Miscus. And 
I play two because it's fine. Like, as long as you have at least two in here, you guys are going to see my next card, Trap Tricks, you can at least use it still. So, I think two is fine. And this one is just nuts. Like, guys, this is the best one. Literally, you can make the Toad out of it. It has other applications in my deck as well. You're going to see the targets that I'll show you in a minute. But, like, it's just so good, man. Um... And yeah, I'm not running the Book of Moon one because it's bad. Like, there's too many link decks out here. It's literally, you'll see it and it's just like, wow, I can't book that Ray, or sorry, that uh, Kagari. What am I going to do? Like, you know, so that's why I'm not playing the other one. So next card, the best card. This card overperformed. Guys, I know there's been all these profiles on YouTube and stuff and people talking about this card. It is that nuts. It's crazy, man. This card literally makes this deck so good. Literally, you just banish a copy of the trap in your deck, and you set that copy, and you can activate it the same turn you use this. It's so great. It's like the card was already on the field, but it's not. So I'm going to show you guys a combo with this in a minute, but, like, it's so good. Um, Right here, next we got our evenly matches. So, yes, I decided to main deck evenly match. So um, that was the best decision I could have made. This is my spice. Everybody's citing this, but guys, it's so good. When I have it in my opening hand, it's literally just like, man, I'm safe. It doesn't matter. So let me show you the combo here real quick. This is the spicy combo that I created with this, and then we'll continue on, but I just wanted to show you guys this real quick. But you go Mamma Mia. Let's say you open Mamma Mia, and you open Trap Tricks. This is really all you need to do it. Um, You can do it different variations, but this is like the standard way to do it. So you open this. You go ahead and set both of these, and then basically what you do is you Mamma Mia, and you hit our next card that I'm going to show you here, Spiritual Swords. This is the next card, so basically what this does is while it's on the field, you can like just negate an attack by paying a thousand life points, but when it's in the graveyard, that's when it shines. It's, it has a graveyard effect. You banish it from your graveyard, and then they can't declare the attack, direct attack. So you go Mamma Mia, um, dump this. And then, like, you do it at the start of the battle phase. They go, battle phase. You say, okay, hold on, I have a response. You dump Mamma Mia, you dump swords, right? And then while they're still in their battle phase, you say, okay, that resolves. They, and then you say, okay, now that that's in graveyard, I banish this so they can't attack directly. They're still stuck in their battle phase. You flip trap tricks, banish a copy of evenly match, and then set a copy of evenly match. And literally, now you can still activate evenly match. Oh, well, in the battle phase, cool, evenly matched. So you just blow them out, basically. It's so cool. Like, I love that I came up with that. But basically, it stops them from attacking, and then you blow out their whole field. And then next turn, you make a toad and just go in into their face and wreck them. Um, so yeah, that's a combo that I created, guys. So that's something creative about this deck that I did. Um, some other things you'll see, too. But basically, I just decided, like, hey, being a frog master, I know some stuff. So here we go. Goes in match. Overperform so good every time I open this I won literally It stops everything right now. Why this over rivalry rivalry is not that good right now This is like so much better this stops sky striker on their standby phase or you see them add rage Just flip this and you'll see them cry because they can't do anything They literally have to summon a ray and then with back row and that's nothing like they can't do anything um they might try to afterburners you with it, but be careful with that. But other than that, though, like, it's so good, man. You just, some, if you have a toe, you protect it. Um, It just stops everything. Rongo, it stops them. A so does a light. So they go dark and they try to go into light. They can't. So good. Um, And then here we got Reckless Greet. Um, this card overperformed too. I'm not running desires as you saw, mainly because of the trap tricks. I don't want to banish the cards that I need. As you see, I'm running three of of all of my traps, or at least two, to be able to have it as a target for trap tricks. But trap tricks on the end phase with this, I'm gonna keep coming back to trap tricks because it's such a good card. Trap tricks on like on your either end phase or, or on your turn. Like you activated reckless on the last turn, cool, you can't draw, and then you go, okay, trap tricks it or another reckless, and then you draw four. Or you have this set on your turn, and you just flip it, and you say, okay, I drew for turn, and then now you're going to be like, okay, I activate Reckless, all right, they say, cool, you draw again, then you say, okay, Trap Tricks into another Reckless, you draw again, <laughs> and then usually you draw into your demises and everything else, and you're just like, okay, I got like nine cards in my hand now, guys, let's go, let's go. <laughs> um, Lost Wins also overperformed, I love this card, guys, this card is so good. I'm trying to get a third super, but um, this card is so good. Literally, it just custom any monster's attack point that was special summon in half, and then basically from there, they also negate their effect. 
Literally, even if you think about Thunder Dragons, the 3200 one, literally you just knock that to 1600. Toes smacks over it, and it don't have an effect so it can't protect itself. So nuts. And guess what? If it's in Graveyard, you can reset it if they summon an extra deck monster. So good. And guess what? I keep coming back to this, but it's a Trap Trick target. Trap Trick is so good in this deck, guys. Um, Speaking of which, we got our Impermanence. I don't mind playing hand traps because of demise, so and also this format doesn't really need hand traps, so it's kind of like, well, I can impermanence on my turn with that, or you know, I can also trap trick stem if I know that like, okay, they're in their main phase, they're about to do something crazy, I'm like, no, I'll trap tricks and then impermanence, and then I can set it in a spot where they put a card and then negate that column too, so it's so good. Always make sure you're watching where you're placing this, so you know where you're putting other stuff, and then our last two one ofs. Um, we have Breakthrough Skill in, in order. Breakthrough Skill is awesome because literally you can send it with Mamma Mia and then basically banish it and target like a Danko and then it doesn't have an effect. You're not activating a trap effect. Um, it's just an effect. And then this is so good. It literally overperformed when it came to strikers. Like I just happened to open it or drew into it in the middle of the game and literally just shut down their whole row. They go, engage. I'm like, I know. And they just sit there and cry on the inside. The extra deck. So guys, the star of the show, the most awesome monster ever printed and the most totally awesome monster, totally awesome. I'm only running two because you're like, why not three? Because honestly, two is all you need. He replaces himself, but also at the same time, I want to have space for other stuff. So I made sure that I only did two. It only came up once where I accidentally forgot that I wasn't running three and I went to make it and I was like, oh crap. But I still managed because they killed the star boy. So I had to get it. I got it back. But basically, yeah, Um, this one signed by Jeff Jones. This was like the one that I got from him on the day of the sneak peek. He was the only one willing to get rid of his toad. So I had him sign this because I'm like, man, thank you so much. And then Matt Weaver sign this he's an old judge friend he's at konami right now shout outs to him he taught me a lot about rulings and stuff so those are the most appropriate people to sign it opal Binia, this guy he's all right i didn't make him not once during this tournament but he's okay um dino miscus is pretty good with him but i don't really like him he's all right but he is unaffected by monster effect which comes in handy against ultra guys but eh, he's all right. I don't really like him. I didn't even run his cousin, like the other one. I, I just literally don't play it, man. Y'all are going to be like, but but he's good. No, he's not. You rarely make him. And yeah, sure, he can pop. But the resources you have to make him with is not worth it. Um, Next, we got our scapegoat package. Um, But reproductions also solves another purpose. You can go into your summon sork with it. Because literally, you just need him and any frog or any card. And you can go into summon sork. Um, and then this is for the scapegoat package, our Link Karibu. You know the whole combo where you go into the Nightmare and then go into the Boral Sword or Boral Oak. We're doing that. Um, also, it's also good when we are locked under Gozen. We can go Link Spider into it and Link Climb up into Ningirisu, which you're going to see in a minute. Um, Nightmare package. Cerberus is also an Earth, so that's also important when it comes to being locked in Gozen. Um, and then, you know, these are just for utility in case I just need to out. They are those answers. Um, Ningrisu, like I just said, you kind of link climb up into it with Link Spider or um, Reproductus. This guy is really good, especially like if you're locked in Gozen, you can literally summon him and then you can get rid of your Gozen whenever you feel like it. But honestly, just keep poking them for game. Literally, I did that two to two games. I flip Skago and they're looking at me like I'm dumb. I'm just like, well, make this guy poke, poke, poke. All right, you can't do anything. Good job. Um, summon Sork, like I said um make it from the reproductives also we're all playing water frog monsters so sure um aqua and then miss boy you know the combo you go into miss boy the uh, toad and basically that's game but also just having a second one is good just in case you know you make it and then you need to make another one but he replaces himself so that's why i didn't do three and then last two are my savage guys man these are my favorite link monsters i promise you guys i love these guys they're so good um i only i didn't go into boro load this tournament but boro store i went into him every match it literally ends games guys it's just so nuts um thank you for printing this konami it's so good um but these are my favorite monsters though and he can like if you want to break a board you can use him he's also unaffected by stuff so that's good on to their side. Uh, so yeah, this guy also overperformed. There's so many cards and last minute decisions that I made that was such a good idea. But this guy is so good. He shuts down Ultra Geist, like literally, um, and other decks too. 
and go in first if you know you're gonna go first put in three and then you'll probably draw it off of demise or something and literally just sit on him with five back row it's also funny because you just keep getting stuff even if they out of you have stuff literally the funniest thing ever is why you have him on board and then you activate a demise and it resolves like because they can't use a hand trap or nothing their face is just like oh my goodness i'm i should scoop now because they should honestly they're not winning um, and then we go here. This guy is really good. I'm not main decking it. Some guys are main decking it. I don't like to main deck it because I want to have as much consistency in the first match as possible. But when I put these in, and again, I keep coming back to trap tricks because it's so good. When you put that in, you go in phase trap trick. It's literally just like a blowout. Like they can't respond to it. It's literally just like, oh, okay, well, I just lost my back row. There was this one ultra guys guy, and like literally, I was like, Oh, in phase, um, I was like, oh, you notice, pop one, in phase, trap trick, <laughs> heavy duster, pop three. <laughs> like, it was just so good, man. All right, and then, so this right here, this package is basically to, I call it the no package. Our real problem here is Danko, guys. Like, and I never had that problem when I was face playing my other versions of decks, but Paleo suffers to Danko. So now that we got a main deck in this meta that uses it, this is kind of like great. So Chaos Trapole and then this one, literally they're counter traps, so they can't respond to these unless they got a rare reboot, um, which is another problem. But that's why Solomon is good because this solves their multi-purpose multi here. We have it for saying no to summons, but also the same reason why we have these. Our dark bribes say no to breaking our board, basically. And Solomon falls under the same category. Literally, game two, side these in, always. Because people are going to have their rare reboots, their twin twisters, all of their hate. And you want to be able to say no. Literally, every game I opened these in game two, I felt so safe to just say set five pass. One of these were amongst those five. Or maybe two of them. Literally, every time. And then, you don't even have to use it for those board breaking cards. Sometimes, they might have a good play. Like, they'll be like... Oh, activate Brilliant Fusion. All right, cool. Activate Dark Bribes. No, you can't do that. And then, like, you have other back row to stop them, so it doesn't matter. So, oh, these are, like, overperformed so good. Like, and them being counter traps are so good. And, yes, they draw a card from this, but that card does not matter because that's the card they were trying to use to stop you. Unless you're just really unlucky and they draw a second copy of it. That happened only once, and not during this tournament, but, like, when I was playtesting it. I went Dark Bribe on the Twin Twisters. He literally opened and drew another Twin Twister. I'm like, are you kidding me? That was just luck. And then lastly, these also overperform. Um, mind Control, so good, guys. Literally, it's good for multiple purposes, just like the other thing. Again, Danko, if you're going second, these Chaos things won't really stop it um because like it's already there but if it's already there you can say grab it go into phoenix and then it's gone and then you can go nuts or just the fact that we play small monsters and if a monster isn't lost win if you mind control it it's literally like okay now it's out the way and i can do what i want with it and also oh, man, there's not much time left i would go mind control snatch their monster just move it out the way and then Hit them with so much damage that they couldn't do anything afterwards. And then like, all right, here you take your monster back. Cool. Um, We got like a minute or two or whatever left in the round. Like, you know that time is happening and there's literally no way to stop it. Well, this is the way to do damage without like doing so much or breaking their board. So it's just a board breaker, guys. Thank you for watching as always. If you guys have any questions or any concerns or anything about this deck profile, just let me know and I can answer them or do another video about it. Just remember to always, always, always stay awesome and enjoy life. Frogmaster Jam signing out. More than awesome, he's totally awesome.